The other advantage of having a printer profile is that inside of Photoshop we can soft proof. In other words, when you're displaying an image on your monitor, it has a monitor profile in there to make up for the inadequacies of the monitor, but then how does it know if you're printing on a matte paper, a glossy paper, a canvas? Glossy papers always have more tendency to be more vibrant and sharper, more brilliant colors, where matte papers are softer colors. Well, how does the image being displayed in the screen know what you're printing to? Well, there's a soft proofing feature in Photoshop that lets you load in the printer profile, where in the printer profile is an exact footprint of what colors that that media printer ink combination can produce. Soft proof setups. How to make your monitor match your printer. It's probably the number one reason we go on consultations is to set up soft proof setups for customers. It's, it's, uh, it's not really straightforward. There's a couple of tools that you use, but it does in, take some intervention and there's quite a few variables. So here's an overview of how that entire process works. First is your monitor setup. You build a, a monitor profile to match the temperature of your viewing conditions. You usually start it at 5000K. That's the ideal situation. The next is you use your recommended luminance as per your i1 match monitor software and you make the necessary adjustments on your monitor. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and follow the instructions in your i1 match software and you're going, to cal you're going to just follow it step by step, it's all instructions, and there's going to be a point when it asks you, do you want to change the luminance? Do you want to make custom luminance on your monitor? You need to make sure you say, yes, I want to do that. And then there's a, there's a button that goes in that brings up different colors, it reads it, and it tells you the luminance, and then you adjust your brightness on your monitor to make that luminance match. Next, you're going to make your test print. We go up to view, we're going to go to proof setup, custom. Under proof setup custom, what we're going to do is we're going to load in our media. It says device to simulate. We're going to load in our media, which is a 7800 Photoblock Premium Luster built in 2007. Okay? Rendering intent. There's two rendering intents that you use. One is perceptual and one is relative color metric. What a rendering intent does is when you have a whole set of colors. It's like a bucket of colors that you can capture with your camera and then you have a printing device that can't capture as many colors. Rendering intent is asking you what do you do with all those colors the camera can see that the printer can't reproduce. Okay? And in relative color metric what it does is all the colors out of gamut it moves, it moves them into gamut and it doesn't change any of the colors that are in gamut. This is important if you're doing art reproduction because the colors that are in gamut, colors that you can reproduce, you want them to match as accurately as possible. But it, perceptual, when you're doing photographs, the perceptual, what it does is when it squeezes the colors in gamut, it squeezes it like a sponge and even the colors in gamut move a little bit. The advantage of that is if there's a red that's out of gamut and it moves it in gamut and there's another red there, it would make two reds that when, you, when you actually saw them look different but when you printed them, they would print exactly the same. Perceptual because it squeezes it like the sponge, it moves even the red that's in gamut in a little bit, so you still can see the differences between the two reds. So the main reason you would use perceptual, the number one reason is for your photographs, for photography, and then when you do an art reproduction, relative color metric is the choice.